questions? Sure, I can I can start if you like. So uh, this was um, part of a series of open office hours I hold typically Friday mornings and I move them around uh, to the various parts of the university and regional campuses and I've had one here in the Cultural Center before with the uh, Puerto Rican Latinx um, community and, and this was one with the African American community. I, I find these a really valuable way to um, uh, communicate with and, and be really the president for an entire university, meet as many people as I can and and get a sense of their concerns, their ideas, uh, really to um, exchange thoughts on uh, how we can make this a better university. And, and today was no exception. We, we had a great conversation. Uh, you know, I had really three messages for the students. One was, uh, you know, uh, to apologize on, on my behalf for um, not reaching out to them sooner when, when they were in pain. And, uh, I regret that, and um, and then I apologize on behalf of the university for, um, for the, some of the experiences that they shared with us on Monday at their march, um, and uh, basically commit to work with them to to um, make this the place that uh, they expect it to be, and um, and that we share you know we share the belief that they have a, a right to uh, learn in an environment that's welcoming and respectful. And so uh, we've had previous meetings with a number of student leaders leading up to this meeting and uh, that, that group's been very clear about their expectations, including providing us with a list of demands um, from a recent meeting they had. And uh, I wanted to go over those with them a little bit and, and share what we could do in the short term and the long term, um, you know, in response to those. And, um, and let them let the students know what they can expect uh, of me and of their university. And uh, I thought it went really well. And then I opened the, um, the floor to questions after a few remarks, and we spent uh, the better part of the meeting uh, going around hearing from the students uh, questions, but not only questions, um, you know, really thoughtful ideas on how to make the university a better place. What were some of those ideas? I mean, what was some of the reactions from some of the students? I mean, are they happy to see that you're taking that effort? Speak with them yeah, they they appreciated the fact that that um, I that I came, and I hope that I sent a signal by coming that uh, with these open office hours that you know I'm here for them, and I'm not going to shy away from uh, any issue, and, and I'm here here for them no matter what. And uh, I think they they appreciated that. Uh, they came up with a number of, of great ideas about um, you know one of the ideas from a biomedical engineer was uh, you know a, a day of celebration of diversity and the the thought behind that was uh, you know to give the opportunity for the broader community uh, uh, at UConn to show support uh, for all of our students uh, um, regardless of identity and and also send a signal to you know to those who are not normally reached by say a seminar on excellence through diversity which tends to to draw the same students and, and uh, not the others um, is a way to reach the whole student body by, by putting on something that's so visible that it really can't be missed that this is what our community values. Uh, there were a number of other ideas and some of them were like the, la the ones you remember the last ones. Well, the last one was some sort of a database on uh, finding mentors uh, for students of, of color and, uh, and identity that matches up possible mentors with possible student needs. So I, I imagine there could be an app for that and I imagine the students will come up with it. But there were just, it, that's just one of many and um, there were really a lot of, of creative ideas. We're, we're thinking about charrettes, you know, design activities and um, crowdsourced you know, opportunities for ideas and things like that. So it was, it was very rich. What's the benefit of having a chief diversity officer, you know, on campus? Yeah, I mean, I think, um, we, 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 you know, it's a right hand for me. I, I, I am in some sense of what I told them is, is I am your chief diversity officer. It, you can expect of me to stand up and speak for our values as a university periodically. But at the same time, I can't be the first responder of every incident and to every incident. My responsibility is um, beyond speaking up about our values is to ensure that we have in place, uh, you know, the, the team that will respond to every incident. And, um, and then more than that, having a chief diversity officer who uh, will, will essentially have the responsibility of developing the vision for the strategic plan going forward to, to create the environment and culture that we want, that we want to have here. And uh, that will be largely their responsibility. But they'll also, we're also looking for someone who has 
the chops and the experience uh, and the, capa you know, the managerial leadership capability to um, engage um, events like this that might derail us from those, from those broader, more affirmative goals. Is it your sense that um, a, a concerns about racism, that it's a part of a culture here, or, or th is this more of an isolated incident and um, there's a strong reaction to it? Yeah, I mean, uh, this is, uh, racism exists in, in, in America and it exists at UConn too. Um, it's not special to hear, um, but it's a challenge for all of us. What could be special to hear is how, it, is how we respond to it. And um, I think, you know, turning it into an opportunity, I think it is an opportunity. What's your response to those who have criticized saying, quote, the university overreacted by wanting to hire a chief diversity officer and holding, you know, a meeting like this morning and, and saying that even offensive and hateful speech is protected under the First Amendment? Well, I, I don't think we're overreacting in hiring a chief diversity officer. I think that's a best practice and it's a critical part of, of uh, supporting our values and our mission. And so uh, we, we have a chief diversity officer right now. He is an interim, um, but I need someone to help me do strategic planning. And one of the thrust areas for, strate for our strategic plan for our university is going to be diversity, likely going to be diversity and inclusion. Uh, there certainly will be a, a strategic plan for diversity and inclusion, but I expect as part of a gra grassroots planning process, that'll emerge as one of the, the thrusts of the overall university strategic plan. So um, that's why that person is, is there, is to help do that and to deal with some of the other issues I was just talking about. But yeah, I mean, it's, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're a university, uh, we're, we're about, our values are about truth, excellence, fairness, and respect. And um, to get at truth and academic freedom, um, we have to support dissent. And um, we have to, to speak out against those who would suppress the voice of others that prevents us from getting the knowledge and the understanding that we seek in order to, to pursue truth. And so part of the issue with um, you know, the speech that we're talking about here is it suppresses the voice of others. And so uh, you know, we have to support free speech, but at the same time not tolerate that which interferes with others. What is the timetable for the search process for the new chief diversity officer? And will the job description be at all reviewed in light of these recent incidents to possibly revise the roles and responsibilities of that person going forward? You know, we've been, um, so I've been saying from the beginning since I started August 1st that uh, one of my biggest priorities is team building and the two big open positions that I came into were chief diversity officer and chief academic officer. And so there's nothing new about that. I've spent over a month going around and meeting with um, uh, the various university diversity committees, um, student, student groups, uh, the cultural center directors to hear from them what should we be looking for in a chief diversity officer and in particular what is the right structure for optimizing our, uh, our mission. And so we've given a lot of thought to that, and I don't think this, is, this changes it a bit. I mean, we have an org structure in mind, we have a reporting line in mind, and we have the qualities of the person we're looking for in mind. So I don't think that's going to change. Did we you have time for about two more questions, and then he's got to run to another meeting. I'm sorry. Did you talk with students about recruitment and retention of black faculty and yeah. black students? We what did. What kind of strategies to use for that? Yeah, yeah, we did. Um, so, you know, we, you know, as in my conversations with the various uh, university um, committees, uh, you know, recent retention uh, losses has, has emerged in several of those conversations as a top priority. I mean, I do think that's something one can turn around, and um, uh, you know, it's it's about um, you know nurturing the <coughs> nurturing faculty, making them feel appreciated. Um, you know the. the um, there, there are some things the department chairs can do, some <clears throat> the things that I can do. I actually think that's, that's um, about the environment and culture and, and um, making sure that it's welcoming, nurturing, and that, we, and that they know that they're cared about. Um, so in terms of recruitment, um, you know, I, we're having a, <clears throat> what I told them is that we're having a uh, strategic planning re retreat with, uh, with the deans. It's been scheduled for a couple of months now. And, one of the few agenda items in that retreat is um, uh, strategic plan starting a strategic planning exercise around diversity and inclusion. And I expect the deans will 
uh, brainstorm and come up with our own priorities. My only guidance to, to them will be to um, uh, focus on a small number of them, three or four, because I believe that's the way you uh, move the needle and make progress. And um, uh, so it's a matter of brain, a brainstorming exercise and seeing if there's a consensus around a couple of priorities. I wouldn't be surprised if one of those priorities was around enhancing the diversity of our faculty. I, in fact, I'd be really surprised if it wasn't. But I'm not going to prejudge that. That's, this is the way the strategic process goes. You put it out there and see what, what they come up with. UConn has had some issues in the past with racially insensitive Halloween costumes, and how do you address something like that? Yeah, I don't know too much about the history, but I know that the student affairs team has already anticipated it and put out a message to, to um, alert students to be sensitive to that. And um, so I hope that message will be effective. Okay. When do you expect to have a chief diversity officer? Oh, sure. Um, so we just um, just now sent out the invitations to the committee, and so. We, we, um, we know the chair of the committee, uh, Mark Overmeyer Velasquez, the director of the, the Hartford campus, regional campus. And um, we expect to get, you know, positive replies from the invited search committee members, you know, over the next week and then to um, convene them, announce them, uh, announce them and convene them, you know, uh, according to schedules, which usually takes about a couple of weeks.